All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the CMake 289 webinar. Uh, this is a release webinar to go over uh, what's new in the CMake release this month. And uh, it'll be a little bit shorter than the last time if you joined us for the last couple of these webinars because uh, there's a little bit less to talk about. But uh, let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing I'll say, as always, is uh, if you want to find out what's new in general about CMake anytime, uh, just visit our website at cmake.org. And uh, the other uh, primary source of information besides visiting the website is uh, to join the mailing list or to look at the mailing list archives. Uh, and there are links on the website that you can use to sign up for the mailing list if you're not already part of it. I assume most of you are probably already part of it because that's probably how you heard about this webinar. Um, so straight into what's new in 289. Um, the first thing I should mention, I guess, is that uh, we do not actually have the release published as of today, um, but we do have release candidates out there. We have RC2 from a little over a week ago, and uh, we will be producing release candidate 3 uh, today. And that should be up uh, live on the website for you to download and try out tomorrow, uh, targeting the final release for CMake 289 uh, next week. Um, if you click on, well, I can click on this link here. Uh, if you look at this in the web browser, we announce all of the uh, release candidates on the Kitware blog. Um, so you can see what's new in each one if you scroll through and read the, the list of the git log, you see exactly what commits are included in each release candidate. Um, and those are also, uh, the blog posts are also sent out as emails to the mailing list. Um, so these are the new features that are in the 289 release. Uh, the new Ninja generator is now on by default on all platforms, including Windows and the Mac. So uh, that's true as of release candidate three, which will be out tomorrow. The one that you can download today does not have the Mac enabled by default. We just got that in in the past week. Um, the new uh, target property called position independent code uh, has been added in this release, and uh, you can use that to automatically add compiler flags uh, to produce position independent code. And those, uh, if you've ever built uh, a static library on Linux, uh, you'll know that you, you have needed to adjust your flags for that stuff in the past. And if you use this new target property, uh, you won't have to do that. You can build code into a static library, uh, use this target property, and CMake will take care of adding the right flags for you under the hood so that uh, you can take that static library and link it into shared libraries and executables without uh, worrying about that stuff anymore. Um, and then the last major feature that uh, we added the 289 is this uh, the mumps programming language uh, has uh, coverage tools for it and we've added uh, coverage support to ctest to uh, include GTM and cache uh, specifically that's been used uh, on the Ocera open source uh, electronic health records project and they're already using this even though it's not out in an official release yet um, they're using interim C test builds to uh, get their coverage dashboards going. And of course, uh, we always include bug fixes with every release. So uh, there's been quite a few of those, probably about 50 or so bug fixes have gone in in the last three months. Um, so the new Ninja generator, if you don't, uh, if you haven't used it yet, Ninja is this really great uh, replacement for Make, which, uh, which will build the software in, you know, it will automatically use as many cores as you have on your machine uh, to, do, to, to get really fast builds going. And it has a really good uh, uh, dependency graph that it knows what depends on what so that it can uh, load that up really quickly. And when, when you have a, a build tree that's built all the way with Ninja, it, uh, it can recognize really quickly that there's nothing to do. And so you end up with no op incremental builds that are less than uh, way less than a second in most cases. So it's better to make in that respect and it also uh, maximizes the parallelizability of building code. So you end up with faster build times overall using Ninja. 
compared to make. Um, so that's uh, if you go to this link uh, on github.com uh, to get the Ninja code on your machine, um, you're going to need Python on your machine in order to build it. But then once you have built it, it, it builds really quickly in you know uh, a minute or so, and uh, then you can use Ninja as a replacement for Make. Um, it's now enabled everywhere by default uh, for, for CMake builds. So the final 2.8.9 release will include the Ninja generator on all platforms. And uh, you can uh, just follow the directions from the Ninja GitHub page, or you can look at one of the uh, dashboard scripts that's in use for CMake Ninja builds um, to see how we automatically do that for some of our dashboard machines. So for example, if I go to the CMake dashboard and then Find a ninja. Find a ninja build. Um, one of the ones from Kitware. We have a script that uh, you can actually grab this script right off of uh, C dash if you want and run it yourself. And you can see how it uh, does uh, a build of ninja from uh, cloning. It clones the ninja project right off of GitHub. And then it calls uh, the configure Python script using Python, and then the bootstrap script for Ninja. And then at the end, you end up with uh, a Ninja that's built on there. And then, so we, we do this automatically every night. So we, we uh, test the latest Ninja every time we uh, run these CMake dashboards. Um, OK, so the position independent code target property, um, this will automatically add the dash f pick or dash f pi uh, compiler flags for compilers that require it when you're building static libraries. And then uh, it removes, uh, it makes it easy for you to uh, remove uh, code that you've had to add in the past yourself that's conditional based on GCC and then you know, add to the CMake CXX flags. Uh, you can get rid of that code now and just set this uh, position independent code target property. <coughs> and then uh, the mumps coverage support that we added to ctest for GTM and cache. Um, there's a demonstration here of uh, this link takes us to a dashboard that shows some mumps code being run. And then you can see uh, the C dash coverage results look just like you know, the C++ coverage results do, but if you click on one of these files, you can see that it's got this strange mumps code behind it. And so there's uh, been code added to C test to parse the output of the mumps-based coverage tool that shows you the line-by-line -line coverage of what has been called in your mumps code. Let's see, back to the PowerPoint. And yeah, you can see uh, if, you, if you go to code.osera.org c dash, you can uh, see that live from day to day and see if uh, the mumps code is improving in coverage. Um, also, in this release as well as every release, we also we we always do bug fixes as we're going. Um, and you can see exactly which issues were fixed in the 289 release if you go to the change log page. And so this list right here is the bugs that have been resolved and marked as fixed in the 289 release. Uh, there's 44 official ones here. <clears throat> there's, uh, there's actually probably more than that, and uh, I have not yet gone through the, uh, the list of other things that have been closed recently to see if other things have snuck in there. And then if you scroll down on this page, you can also see the bugs that were fixed in the previous releases. So the change log page is always a good place to go to see if something has been fixed. And then uh, after telling you the highlights of uh, what's, been, what's new in 289 this month, um, people are always asking, you know, what's coming next? So here's a little uh, preview of what's coming in 2810. I don't have any specifics to tell you uh, today about specific things, but you can uh, follow the discussions on the mailing list if you join the mailing list. And there's also uh, in the bug tracker a roadmap page in addition to the change log page. Uh, so you can see here is the roadmap page for 289. This, uh, the roadmap page only shows 
releases that uh, uh, where we have issues in the bug tracker scheduled for that release, but they're not uh, they're not actually in an official release yet. And it show, tells you when it was scheduled for release, and then also uh, the ones the, the issues that are marked as targeted for being fixed in this release. And you can see that we still have one. One outstanding one. I don't know if that one's going to get fixed or not. We might just change that one to be uh, in 2.8.10 when we update the bug tracker here. We can always, uh, but be before we uh, we got to this point in the release where everything on this list is done, uh, when we first started this, you could see there was a list of about 10 or 20 bugs that were on here, and then things got added as we went through the last three months. And you can kind of keep up to date on what's uh, actively being worked on by looking at the roadmap page in the bug tracker. And another thing you can do is uh, is follow commits as they're uh, as they're merged either to Next or to our master branch. Um, if you use the Git web interface to look at uh, the CMake code base, and uh, one of the cool things about this, it shows you like up to the minute changes of what's in the Git repository in the given branches. So this is a view of uh, Ref's head's master. And you can see that yesterday we merged a bunch of stuff in uh, for in preparation for RC3. Um, if you want to be notified of this, scroll to the bottom of the page. There's a little button that says RSS, and you can uh, get an RSS feed directly from GitWeb of changes as they go in live. And uh, if you have an RSS reader, you can see you know what's new since the since the last time you looked. And typically. The next branch we have changes every day, uh, and then the master branch we have changes uh, once a week when we do our merge sessions on Tuesdays. And everything that we merge into master is something that will appear in the following release. <clears throat> so the stuff that's in master right now will be in RC3 uh, later today, and then those binaries will be built and they'll be available for download uh, first thing in the morning tomorrow, if not by tonight. And uh, last slide for today's webinar, I'd like to uh, kind of do a, a little report from the Git repository of who has contributed code since the last time we did a release. And you can see the command I used uh, up on the top here to get this. Whoops. It didn't work out like I wanted it to. Uh, but so that if you execute that git command, you notice that it uh, goes from v 2.8.8 .8 to origin master because we don't have a v 2.8.9 tag yet. Uh, but so that's basically all of the authors who have contributed code to CMake in the last three months, basically, that has gone into master. And so I would just like to th say a big thank you to everybody whose name appears on this list and to all the people around them who are supporting them and uh, helping to make CMake. Uh, the best build generator system out there. All right, so that's uh, all we've got for, for today, and uh, it's a little bit short. So let's see if uh, anybody has any questions. Uh, I didn't see any questions come in as we we're uh, talking today. If you have any questions, you can type them in right now. I'll stay on for another minute or two, and uh, if not, if you think something later, just uh, join up for the CMake mailing list and uh, send your questions to the CMake at cmake.org email address. And uh, the community listening at that email list is very helpful. And even if uh, one of us main CMake guys from Kitware uh, doesn't respond, there's uh, tons of people listening in on that. And uh, most people on there are very helpful. So thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you again in a couple months.